y'all. It's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome to another garden tour. So it is literally Easter Sunday, which means we're doing our April garden tour. Um, I've been trying to do them towards the end of the month, so you see like the full month of growth. So we've done my one for February, which was kind of my spring bed cleanup video. I will leave that below. And my one for March. So today we are doing April. Um, and we are doing it just a smidge early because all the snapdragons are in bloom and one of my irises that's very pretty is in full bloom right now. And I wanted to catch as many things in bloom um, for the month as possible. And once these things go out of bloom, I'll have to cut them back until they bloom again. So it'll be a couple weeks. So I apologize for all the noise. There's an ambulance. Apparently, it is just a little busy today. My neighbor, a couple houses down, is cutting their grass. There seems to be a lot of roadways, so hopefully, it is not too distracting. But we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how everything is looking. You might be able to tell it's a little overcast. We had a lot of rain last night, so everything is very happy and roomy and beautiful. and. It is going to rain all night tonight, so you can see I have um, quite a few plants from the nursery. I just, Mom and I went to the nursery yesterday, and I'm going to do a whole video on that. I actually filmed at the nursery for you. I'm going to do a video putting all those things in the ground right after this. Um, but I wanted to just show you how everything looks, and then I want to get everything in the ground before it rains again, so that all the new plants can benefit from the rain as well. But, we're going to, of course, start around the corner at the beginning and we'll go all the way down. And I will just show you how everything's looking, including the new garden bed with the plants that we transplanted from mom's yard if you caught the new garden bed video. Bitty bitty, come down here. Come on. She's like up at the road. Are you allowed to do go to the road? No. All right, so like usual, we are starting around the house with the stock tank garden. Oh my goodness, you guys, look at this. So if you watched in the stock tank garden video, we planted five little watermelon seeds and yesterday there was no green in here. Look with all the rain, how well they've come up overnight. I love how literally things pop up overnight sometimes. I was starting to think I needed to replant all those seeds and there are three baby watermelon plants. That's so exciting. My cucumber plant obviously is also growing up the trellis quite nicely. You can see I have um, some of these clips. They don't need it as much as they get further up the trellis and there's less to hold on to. But these are just clips for plants and I just use them to kind of tie things off at the base until they start growing up the trellis. At the bottom here, they can really try to spread out and grab onto this trellis, grab onto the other plants, grab onto the house. So you just need to encourage them to grow upwards vertically. And then once they get the hang of that, it's not as big a deal. Um, but you can see it's working. They are all going up and there are lots and lots of flowers already popping up in here, which means we will soon have lots and lots of cucumbers. The lavender is living, but it's not taking off just yet, but it does smell so good. So then coming around the corner here, we have my rose and you can see I'm actually getting buds since I pruned this back in that spring garden cleanup video. It has leafed out so much since then in the last two months and now the buds are coming. We are going to have roses soon which is exciting. I planted this last year and it tried to go straight up. It shot out one runner. This is not a trellising rose, so I don't know why it did that. Um, we started to think it had been mislabeled, 
at the garden center. Um, but this year it's looking much better, like an actual bush rose and sending out lots of buds, which is exciting because it only ever bloomed like once last year. So I did pick up some rose tone and I'm going to be coming around and fertilizing all of my roses and perennial shrubs and flowers. So speaking of perennial flowers, my cone flowers over here are monsters. This is the one I transplanted. It was back here. So I moved it up front and he had to have an umbrella over him for a couple days, but now he looks beautiful. Gara's getting big and bushy and putting on lots of blooms. This variety, I believe, gets up to like four feet tall with long airy stalks and those flowers at the tops, but this is only its second year. First time it's ever bloomed, so it will probably be a couple years before it reaches its full size, but that's okay. It's doing really well. Also have one, two, three, four, five, six Cosmos plants up in here. And so, all right, apparently my neighbor is going to come closer and mow next to me. That's great. Um, as these blooms go away, I am going to be cutting all the Cosmos down and I'm just pinching them back. So they grow new shoots, bigger and bushier, same like I do with the snapdragons. We do have these two angelonia plants. I moved them over. They were on either side of the stepping stone. And then the four angelonia plants down here did not make it. So we have angelonia one, two, three, four of the smaller purple ones. And then you can see around my little shepherd's hook. There's my neighbor. Um, the blue angel face angelonia is coming back with a vengeance. So those are going to be beautiful. Cannot wait, but let's go ahead and jump real quick over to the new garden bed while we're down here. So if you watch that video, my oak leaf hydrangea, I did take the umbrella down for this video, but I have been leaving the umbrella up. It's doing beautifully. Um, you might have seen in that video, it was really stressed after I moved it, and it looks really good right now. Hopefully, it'll still bloom this year. My mom's that we took this cutting from, um, not cutting, it was shoot suckers that had come off and runners, but one, two, three spots where there should be blooms. Her blooms are really budding out and starting to put on growth and going to flower soon, so... I am hoping that you can still see where the blooms were, um, are, that it will still bloom this year. You can see my little petunias. They are putting on growth. I did add this little orb down here, and I want that petunia to grow up and through it. I do think I might need, like, a smidge more compost in this bed. You can see exactly where that umbrella was during the rain last night. And then we have, of course, one more petunia. And... Here starts the drift of salvia. So the salvia comes up into this bed. I actually have one right here that is just starting to flower. So this is what it looks like. And they get really big and bushy. And they will fill this whole spot in throughout the season, which is really nice. There are also definitely a few weeds in here that I need to pull that have shot up with the rain as well. Um... And our one hydrangea that we transplanted from mom's house. This is one of the two lace caps. I still think it looks like a dead stick, but we're watering it. We'll see what happens. I did leave these guys in here. So when mom and I went to the nursery, I got these two white foxgloves. They look a little sad from the rain last night because they're not planted. And you can see my wisteria stick that we planted in the new bed video. Look what I found at the nursery. All right, y'all. Unfortunately, something very weird happened with my audio at this point, and the sound just started going wah, 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 with no talking. So I was telling you all about my beautiful new wisteria plant. Um, I loved my wisteria stick, and hopefully it'll still be great. But this plant is a non-invasive species. Mom says that's got to be four or five years of growth. 
and it was $30 at the nursery. So I had to get it. I'm going to train it to go up this tree and it will be beautiful. I can't wait. But then we have my alliums and they are not so beautiful. So I do have a few with good foliage. You can see one on the left there, right behind the fox love leaves. But this one, I mean, that looks dead. That just straight up looks dead. Um, we're still gonna try. I think they are lacking some nitrogen from what I've read. So we're going to fertilize them with some nitrogen rich um, fertilizer. And I'm actually going to put some water from my fish tank on them, which is also rich in nitrogen. So if you wanna see all of that, I'm going to do a video on it, on fertilizing my roses and alliums and everything else and the benefits of the fish tank water, which you may not ever need to know, but I do, my mom reminded me of that trick and I'm going to try it. So let's come over here and I'm showing you my foxglove. There's another allium, there's another allium. We'll see what I'm showing you. I'm watching the video with you now. Yeah, okay, so this foliage is better. Got it, Betsy. You're so helpful. I'm really excited about this foxglove. I've been wanting white ones for a while, so I'm really hoping that these um, set some seeds and come back next year. But if not, I did order some white seeds. Okay, so on to my pin cushion flowers. These look beautiful. I tried them in a few spots, just setting their little cans out until I found a spot that they liked. And you can see how pretty they are. The ones I had last year did not live. And look down there, I think I'm gonna get closer in a second. Yeah, okay, so I've been looking and there are, there you go, little blooms still coming up. So not only are they loving their new spot, but they are putting out new blooms. So I'm hoping they will really take off and love this spot and grow really well here because like I said, the ones I had last year, they just straight up died. Like didn't love their spot enough to even try. <laughs> so then to the left of that, I have the agapanthus that we got from my mom's house. You can see that in the new garden bed that I put out and then all of my zinnia seeds. All these little pink tags are zinnia seeds that I self seeded in this bed cannot wait to see how they do. They should be germinating soon. Apparently zinnias germinate really fast. So hopefully in the next couple days we will have some zinnias. Then we have another foxglove and I have two more baby foxgloves to put with them that will hopefully bloom next year since foxglove are biannual. And on the left there you can see my other hydrangea from my mom's house, the lace cap. That is not a dead stick. So that one looks much better. I don't even know what I'm showing you. The fox love again, we've seen it, it's great. I have sped up this clip where the audio was messed up 300%. This is 300% and the video itself was only supposed to be three minutes. So I don't know what happened to this clip, but something bad because the audio is messed up and it is so slow even at 300%. So. If you make it through this part, you are the real MVP. All right. Now I'm pointing out the hydrangea again. And even the ends of that little brown stick have green on them. So this hydrangea is definitely, you know, looking great. I don't think it will bloom this year. I don't even think it will get super big this year, but it should get, you know, it should get some growth on it and then next year, hopefully it will be big enough to bloom. That will be really nice. Mom's plant that we took this cutting from is huge. All right, so now I'm showing you my poor little crepe myrtle tree. We dug this up and it just had hardly any roots. This was a volunteer from mom's yard. And it still has leaves, but the leaves are getting very, not crispy. Like when you touch them, see I'm touching them. There you go. Now we're on the same page. When you touch them, they're not crispy. They are very pliable. And so that is a very good sign after a week that this plant is still alive. So there's still hope that while it might not look good this year, 
Mom said she has transplanted some that looked like this, that rooted in, looked like hell the first year and came back beautiful the second year. So I'm going to leave it. It was free. If it comes back next year, great. If it doesn't, then I'll rip it out next year and buy one from a nursery for 30 bucks. A wisteria stick we planted. You can see the difference. And this, and this, this was $7, this was 30. If I had seen this, I would have never bought this, but we'll try it. So, if the stick does well, then maybe we'll just have two. Oh, and I forgot. One, two, three, where these white tags are, those are the lily bulbs, the tiger lily bulbs we planted. So then we have our cosmos around this Laura Pudlum. Not bitty bitty. So these are the three. One, two, and three down there behind the oak leaf that we transplanted from the end of the yard in the new bed video. So on this side of the second grape myrtle. And they are already much happier over here. You can see the bright red is all new growth from the last week. Even the baby, almost dead one, has it. And when you look at these sticks, there is um, little bits of growth on them. So I have hope that they like their new spot way better than the old spot and that they will come back bigger and beautiful and more like the ones on this half of the garden. So. Cosmos need to be pinched back. So next time you see these, hopefully they will be twice as big and twice as bushy. The pink tags over here are foxglove seeds. Let's see how those do. And looky here. So these are just leaves, but right here, let's see if I can get in here and show you. Weed, it's a weed, but this, is a tiger lily bulb already coming up. So the rain just really, really helps. This is another bubblegum pink petunia that'll fill in. And you can see here is where the end of the pink salvia drift is. And some of these itty bitty baby ones may not take off and that's okay. If they don't, we will have, we will have more eventually, but This whole new bed looks so good compared to what we started with last week. And it really, I love how it ties in with the rest of the garden. I loved this bed already. This one just gives me more space and I love how this path will come around. So I'm gonna continue the palette all the way around here, up past my car so I can get out onto the path and connect there so i am hoping to get i think i'm gonna get a little like shed that goes against the house to put all my tools in so that this is cleaner and then all of this not exactly sure but i'm thinking i'm gonna put three or four raised beds in here to grow pumpkins broccoli lettuce carrots and dahlias tall dahlias so that might not be a May project that might be a down the road project, but leave me a link, a link, leave me a thought below as to what kind of raised beds you think I should do because I'm still trying to decide. But let's get back into this garden bed. So you can see all the little Vinca babies from last year that are coming up, but it's very hard to tell. Um, so like this right here, that's big enough. Now I can tell that's a weed. That's a weed. When they're these little bitty babies, it's very hard to tell what's vinca, what's a weed. I'm just letting them grow until I can tell. And then we will thin them out, get all the weeds out, let what grows grow. Marigolds are doing really well. My one mum is doing really well. It's kind of growing backwards. Wish it was more forward, but I don't really want to dig it up again. But mom said down here in the south, 
need to pinch these back every week until the 4th of July or they will bloom now and not in the fall, which I didn't know that. So I'm going to come in here and pinch this whole baby back. And we have one, two, three, lots of little foxgloves that I've direct seeded. We'll see how those are doing. And you can see the glads are coming up really well that we planted in our bulb video. Foxglove looking great. My hydrangea is looking amazing. If you remember that from last month, it even has lots of little buds on it now, which is very exciting. He was not super happy last year, so I'm hoping she'll be very happy this year and put on much better show of blooms. This is Homestead Verbena. That's actually looking much better today than it has been. We've got the Lobelia that is blooming like crazy today, which is nice. It was budded up yesterday, but now it is in blooming, blooming, blooming. I'm hoping throughout the season that it will fill in a lot of this front bed, but it is a perennial, so it may take a year or two. And then we come to these fox gloves, which are still my most monstrous ones. And of course they're all in a row. Whatever it is about this spot, it is loved by the fox glove. We have my two bubblegum pink, and we have snapdragons that are all coming in beautifully. So again, once all these blooms are done, we will cut them back and then they will reflush with new growth, bigger, better. They'll start growing together more and they will bloom probably till July. It gets too hot in July. This lamb's ear is one of the two that's struggling. It is, it is doing okay. We'll see how it does, but it's not half as happy as these. And then of all the daffodil bulbs we planted, this is the only one that's coming up. So, one daffodil bulb is happy. Guess that is what it is. Probably wouldn't have put it right there for my one bulb, but we're gonna let it grow. We'll see if it blooms. And we might dig all those bulbs up. There's some here, here, and here. And then there are, I, I don't remember how many we planted, like, 10 groups around this tree in this bed. None of those are coming up. You win some, you lose some. Daffodil bulbs, bust. Allium bulbs, maybe dead, maybe not dead. Um, glad bulbs, love and life. And you'll see the iris bulbs we planted are loving life. So two out of two. Pretty happy with that for my first year with bulbs. Let's go ahead and move on to this side. Biddy, are you going to show us around? Biddy, Biddy. <laughs> so over here, my little sweet pea babies are going bonkers and they are starting to grow up this egg trellis. Um, and we definitely, they all need to be pinched back and mom needs to come take like, she's supposed to take over half of each of these pots. She wants to grow them up her arbor um, gazebo fence thing. So that's why they're planted so heavily. I'm only supposed to have like six in here and that was still heavy planted for these little pots. So she needs to come get them or I'm gonna have to take them out cause they're going to overcrowd mine. <laughs> but I grew all these from seed. It's my first year doing that. So I am very happy with them. This is the rest of my nursery hall. So if you want to see me plant these things, I have two peonies. I'm very excited about these. I think I'm going to do a whole separate video on these because we are an 8B, which means growing peonies can be a bit of a challenge. So I think I'm going to do a separate video series on planting peonies in the south and how these do. This is my first time planting them. I've done a lot of research, but that doesn't mean any of it will help. So we're going to try it. We, we paid for two beautiful plants. Hopefully we'll have a couple buds, but... Then we got two more bags of gladiolus bulbs, which we now need to put in the ground since they got wet. And one more proven winners. 
Sweet Petunia Vista Silver Silverberry, which I'll show you. We had one volunteer from last year come back that we planted on the window boxes. He looks great, but he is not performing the same as the bubblegum, so I'm going to double him up so he grows better. And then I got all of these little baby fox gloves for three dollars each got seven of them this is all they had at the nursery and i'm just gonna put those all around different spots in the flower beds um because i want more and more and more fox glove i want them everywhere i want them i mean you can see where i put the direct seed ones like in between all the way back here i'm really going for as much of an english cottage border style where things are just growing up and intermixed all together as possible so I'm going to plant them all throughout we'll see how they do but let's go ahead and get started going down this way you can see the snapdragons and the lobelium and the iris and my rose my rose is starting to bloom oh I'm so excited all blooming all beautiful and then and window boxes. Let's do the window boxes real quick. So you can see here, this is the verbena. These are the Vista bubblegum. This bloom is going out of, out of bloom. But I cut these back in that video when I planted these up. And you can see they are already like three times as big as they were. Even this little one, this was the worst verbena I bought, is, is putting on lots of growth back here. So this plant will be big and bushy before you know it. The ones I cut back that were big and bushy are putting out bloom, 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 bloom. Like these things are just going to go nuts in here once they're established. I want a little sneak peek of the irises because this is the most exciting part. Oh, look, this is even already starting to look grown together. I'm so excited. But down here, oh, an iris bloom. Oh, an iris bloom. It's white, you guys. Oh, I didn't even know this was here, Bitty. Bitty, I'm so excited. So these are the double iris. I planted these this year. They were from a girl on Facebook Marketplace. And I have, you can see bud, bud. There's more over here, bud. There's another bud down here. I have four or five bloom buds already. Oh, that makes me very happy. Very happy. I cannot wait to see. I thought it looked blue, but it's definitely white. And then I planted in each group, I planted four from that lady and one of the pink iris that I bought from Rex. So we will see as these come up if any of the pink ones come up or if they're all white. If none of the pink ones come up, then I'll probably add pink to them this year. But white is great. When we bought them from her, she had no idea what color they were. Um, she said some were white, some were red, some were yellow. So far, all the moms that have bloomed, she's had quite a few more blooms than me. This is my first one. Um, have been white. And I read online that sometimes when iris um, grow, 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 and then they need to be divided, which is why we got these from her. I got like 50, I want to say bulbs from her for like 20 bucks, which was great. That's why we got them from her. When they grow and then they need to be divided and they haven't been divided in a while, they just all turn white. And so if all of these are white, I'm fine with that. I like white, um, but I definitely want some pink and blue and things in there as well. So, you know, and I have to keep adding, but if, if I get blooms on these this year, I will be happy with that. Okay. So the whole reason we walked down here, the white one is in blooms. So when I bought these, they were all together storm burst. Some of them are white, some are that purple and white, and it's just a question of when they bloom, which color you're gonna get. And then we have that beautiful bubblegum pink. And this is the silverberry. So you can see 
he's beautiful, but he's just not putting out the growth that the bubble gum is. Like most of them look like this. This one's a little behind. He doesn't get quite as much sun in this spot. And so I know that this box struggles more than all the other boxes. And this plant struggles more than these plants. So that's why I'm going to double him up. We will see how that works. Hi, huh, bitty bitty. But let's go ahead and go back down. And we will start the tour of this bed. Okay, so here is the second half of the garden. You can see we've got a lot of growth over here. My hydrangea bush is leafing out and it has blooms, baby blooms. The salvia, the pink purple salvia below it also has blooms. And so this is the only like purpley salvia that I have. It's, it's technically pink, but if you see the actual pink salvia, it looks purple. So then where all these little pink tags are, I've planted foxglove seeds. They may or may not come up this year, but all of this, all those little vinca babies, they're, they're still coming in. Salvia is blooming and growing together. So this was one, two, three, four plants last year, and you can see it's actually grown into a clump. I did just uh, cut a couple branches off the crepe myrtle, limbing it up a little. The salvia was starting to grow out and wonky, trying to reach the sun. So we do have, oh, we have some blooms on the coneflowers coming in. So I have one, two, three coneflowers. You can see they're much smaller than the ones on the other side, but that's okay. And the window boxes are starting to actually put on some growth. Cannot wait until those are big and beautiful. And then we get into the flowers. So the lobelia is budding up everywhere that there weren't blooms already. And all of my snapdragons that I cut back after their first bloom, these were all one stalks. You can see what cutting back a snapdragon does for it. Now, instead of one stalk, I have like six. This was two stalks on each plant. So one stalk has turned into three. On every single one, they are all blooming across the garden. So excited. The little marigolds are settling into their new homes well. This is one of the lambs here that was not doing great. It's one of the two that had that part in the middle dying out and it is coming back nicely. And here is our most beautiful moment. So we have our rose, our knockout roses starting to bloom. I'm going to fertilize these this week so then we'll get even more blooms. And here are our iris. So these are not your traditional iris. What kind of iris are these, Mama? Mom, what kind of iris are these again? Some kind of flag iris. They are definitely a smaller iris, but look how pretty those blooms are. And you can see we still have more buds on these. So they are not done, but they just, these all opened this morning. And we went from having one kind of spent bloom to one, two, three, four, five on this plant and two on this plant for the day, which is just so exciting. And these colors here together, the blue purple iris, the pink rose, the yellow magnolias. These are not magnolias, marigolds. Blue salvia, lobelia, the white, like... It's really coming together. Now we need more pink in here, but you know, all our petunias and things are still, they're still coming. So we will have more other colors, mainly pink. That's what we care about. We did go ahead and transplant that one mom from down there that wasn't doing so hot and it is doing great here. So I had one here, one, two, three. This one died. I planted two over there. So I moved the one that lived here. 
this is one vinca from last year that's coming back and I transplanted it here because I'm going to move a bunch of the vinca to this field. And then we will have a whole field of vinca again, like we did last year. Here, one of our big pots of pink, this petunia is coming in and putting some growth on. You can see one, two, three, four salvia plants here, planted three groups of these. And this one is filling in, but it is not nearly as together as the first grouping because this one gets a little more shade. So there's the difference. You can also see that this lobelia in the shade is loving its life. So there you go. Different things for different people. My lupin has totally gone to seed. I'm gonna collect that seed so that I can plant some more of those over here next year. And here's another bloom and another iris. So these are all the iris that I planted along with our glads in our spring and summer bulb video. And so all of these irises, they are not first year iris since I did get them from a lady had them in her garden. They were already blooming in her garden. Um, iris don't typically bloom the first year. So I wasn't sure with transplanting them, leaving them literally on the side of the road all year, I like six months, how they would do. They're doing great and they're growing and they're blooming and I'm very excited. I was not expecting any blooms from them this year and at least four or five of them are putting out buds. So that's exciting. More foxglove seeds. I am hoping that at least a few of them actually germinate. It is hard to tell so far, but we will see. We will see. We also have the Nandina one, two, three that we replaced when I did the new garden bed. We had the the taller. Oh, I never can remember that. Laura Pedlum. And it just was not doing well down here. So those are doing well in the new bed. You saw them. This is where they were from. And the new Nandina is doing much better. So that is about it. That is the whole garden bed. We will do an overview. Let's go up to the road and let you see everything all together. blooms. I am sure in the next week or two we will have even more. Um, <laughs> I filmed part of this yesterday when my iris started blooming because I wasn't sure if it would bloom. Um, sometimes I bloom for one day, sometimes two, but you can see where some of those blooms were yesterday that I showed you. They're still there. They're a little faded. But all that same bloom stock, a second bloom is opening. So I'm having one or two at each spot, I think those are just going to keep moving like crazy. They will keep expanding every year, but we'll see. We'll see how long they bloom for. And then you saw the white iris I showed you yesterday, the second part of that video. It will. <laughs> you saw me just showing those window boxes. That was the first time I'd seen it. I'm so excited. We'll have more white iris all the way from here. So if I before this video is edited, maybe within the next couple days, I will try to get a little more footage and add it to the end of this video. If they don't bloom for another couple weeks, then maybe we'll see them in the main tour. But either way, I'm so excited. There's just spring and growth, the beautiful flowers in the garden right now, more buds. This entire plant has buds ready to open. So, I mean, the roses are about to go crazy. The irises are going crazy. All the pretty flowers are opening up. Um, I will see if I can't see a little bit more footage into this video for you as these things open so you can see how they look. It is hard with a tour video sometimes to get all the things open at the same time. The flowers don't work like that, um, which is good because if they were all open on the exact same day, well, that would be great for video, but it would be great for real life. So it's nice to come out and be able to enjoy different things every day. Um, 
I wish they would just all bloom all season long, but that's not how gardens work in here. Either way, thank you for watching. I am going to go put all my new nursery plants in the ground. So if you want to see that, stick around. If you want to see my video on all my things I've learned about going to peonies in the south, I'm also going to be planting those and filming that video separately. So I will try to link all of that down below once it's all finished. So hope you liked this video. I hope I will see you next month for the May Garden Tour. But that is it for today in April. I am going to go plant everything and then get ready to go to my family's for Easter dinner. So you ready, bitty bitty? Say bye. See you next month. Let's go. Let's go plant stuff.
before I go, I just wanted to show you this weed and this zinnia. The zinnias are coming up. Our seeds. So excited to see how many of them actually come up. So far, it looks about half. This one has a sprout. That one has a sprout. So, ooh, that one has a sprout. We will see. So far, so good, y'all. So excited. Bye.